Welcome back to Kin in Line. I make this part 88. We're still going through my doodle art from the 1980s. Um, <clears throat> so this was 1989, something from the Independent Trade Union Guide, some book that they've um, launched, published, and this drawing just happened to be on this page. Again, it's a lesson in shading as well as quite an incredibly bizarre face. And on the back is this. I wonder who Liz Clark is and where she is today. But anyway, she's now finally famous. Even this thing, which looks kind of like a landscape, takes on a bit of a human shape here. Yeah, this looks like a mouth and a big eye. Might just be me, but I'm sensing surveillance is encroaching the surveillance society. So this was an invitation to the Stanner Bank Young Artists uh, he was a guest artist at the Arts Festival in Grahamstown. And this was just an invitation, which I then embellished with yet another interesting creature and a bit of a landscape behind there. This looks like a very complicated draw setup and this guy looks like he's damaged his hands working with all this equipment yep yeah, another weird face Every face is different that I come up with, which is incredible, really. And this one's got a moustache, triple three, one, double one, two. What's the number of his moustache? Mm. Beast. Another nice profile. And here we've got a double profile, which reminds me of those sketches I did from life where you redraw. But this is, uh, this is also interesting because it's both two-dimensional and sort of three-dimensional. Which I think is what Picasso often did. Not that I'm saying Picasso is as good as an artist as I am, but... You know, you've got to give some credit to those early pioneers. So this looks like something out of the Chinese or you know, the, what did uh, Mao Zedong call it? The, yeah, earlier I couldn't think of the term about eyes on stalks. But that's, this guy's also got them on stalks. It's an interesting device, which I also subconsciously did. Job. This would be the cultural revolution, that's the word. And we're going to have one soon as, a, well, a global cultural revolution. But this is, that is something up with which this guy will not put can see he's already winding up to give Klaus Schwab a punch in the nose with that fist. I mean, it could be quite lethal, and he's going to enjoy doing it. Uh, 
uh, Bob Dylan had a line, the sun isn't yellow, it's chicken. One of the great, great poets. So I'm not sure what this was all about. Uh -huh. Just boring pots and rugs and stuff by Dawn Barkhausen, who was on the Herald and then she moved to the Sunday Times. She got into trouble because of reporting on Winnie Mandela. She came back to PE. She had a special cage made for her to lock her car away each evening in the garage, the garage, parking garage we had, because she was so scared that somebody was going to sabotage it or put a bomb under it or something. It was, that, that was the late 19, uh, 18, maybe early 90s, I think, when Winnie was feeling the pressure, but... See, this one wants to be opened out. And this was Colin Jazz Circle. So Colin Black Label used to host this this jazz festival, uh, that's what it was, 89, I think. Uh, this was in East London. I think it moved to PE. It used to go on. Really, I enjoyed it. I went to one in the Feather Market Hall, and it was fantastic. Probably one of the few white people there, because this jazz was mainly for Af African people. But I did some great sketches there of these jazz musicians. So the real interest is in this little corner creature. Again, no, just even on a news, bit of newspaper. So I'll go a Toyota. There's a lot you can glean from a, just an advert like this and then this little chap in the shade but look at that mouth it's also two faces here the dark one in profile actually the light one in profile and then the two of them combined so maybe that's South Africa in the post apartheid South Africa incredible I must have had this premonition that it was going to happen. A lot of stuff scrawled across the page. And then down below, in his pyjamas, this four-legged old toppy. Letting that one speak for itself. The Americans would call this a vase. Not sure why they, certain words they just insist on mispronouncing. Vase becomes vase. And the worst one for me is aunt. It becomes ant. So your father or mother's sister is your aunt. Then I wonder what they call the things that crawl around on the ground. Are they also ants? Hmm. 
uni spin, union spinning models. Yeah, that's all bits of history of PE. There's a big mill on next to the harbour or next to the station, maybe. This one has a sort of African feel to it. The nice thing about these images is they're totally escapist. You don't have to think about what they represent or they just whatever your mind wants them to be. This is like a kind of plant, like a poppy or something. Yeah, the tiniest of figures. Just she's dancing. She's actually happy. Small as she is, and she's dwarfed by the page, but she's as happy as Harry. Is that the same? Oh. There's another little one. He's not too chuffed. Van Arda. Look at those nostrils. Yonker, dispatch or eat me. His old Donker Yonker. Could have been him. He was the detective in charge of investigating. Um, Satanism, which was then an outlawed re religion, for want of a better word. Nowadays, of course, anything goes. Well, Sarl Yonka, I think. I don't know if that's the same guy. Anyway, I think we'll have to leave it for now. Cheers, sir.